Students are born creators, but often need a means to showcase their creations. With Prezi for the iPad, students are able to create beautiful presentations in which they can create, collaborate, communicate, and think critically. The most important feature of this, however, is the ability to collaborate. When opening up Prezi, you will see that you have either your Prezi's that have been saved or shared with you. Let's go ahead and edit this sample presentation. Initially, students are able to choose from 27 different templates by clicking on the wrench at the top right hand corner of the screen. Please note though that when students create these templates, they are given a certain number of frames. It's important for students to add more frames than they think are necessary when they start their project. So for example, I might continue to add frames onto this one particular presentation, even if I don't think I'll need it. I'm able to delete the unnecessary frames at the end, but I am not able to add more to the template once I have finished. Once we get started with Prezi, we see that we're able to do several different things. So let's click on this frame titled Vocabulary. One neat way that students could use this, a Prezi, is by typing in a vocabulary word. So let's start with the word cap. If that's a vocabulary word for students, we might also ask them to add an image by clicking in the box. They can choose from a Flickr image search, take a photo, or choose an existing. Let's say we want to do a search. We search for the word cat. We give it a second, we come up with several images of cats. Let's go ahead and just click on this one right here and click use. That will then instantly be inserted into our Prezi. If we jump over here to the next frame in this presentation, this is where we then put the definition. So maybe we're going to put a furry meowing creature. And of course, again, I'm given the opportunity to put in an image. I can also change the way the layout looks simply by clicking the tabs at the bottom of the screen. So that's one way to use Prezi is for vocabulary review. Another example for using Prezi is for a simple presentation. So I'm doing a presentation on Van Gogh. Here, I might put in some text about Van Gogh. And then I might add images that I've already found in regards to Van Gogh. In this case, I'm going to choose from existing images under my camera roll. If you watch the screencasting video that was a part of this newsletter, you know that we talked about creating albums within your camera roll. In this case, I'm going to click on my art album because I've already created this portfolio as a student. And I'm going to click on one of my Van Gogh photos, Starry Night, which will then be inserted into my presentation. And there I've got a subject about Van Gogh. Let's say I wanted to create an autobiography about myself. If we go to this next frame, I can type in some information about me. I can add an image, but this time, if I wanted to do it, I could add that image by actually taking a photo of myself. So those are just a few ways that students might use Prezi. At any time, students can click in the right-hand corner to click present and see how this might look. I can click on do to go back if I don't like what I put in. And if I want to go back to the home, it's going to ask me if I want to save it or close without saving. But what about if I want to collaborate? The trick to being able to collaborate on a Prezi is to actually go into the web browser. So if I go to my web browser and go to Prezi.com and go ahead and log in, I will then be able to access the Prezi's that I have made, whether it be via an iPad or a laptop, just like before. So I'm going to go ahead and go to Prezi.com and I'm just going to very quickly show you how students are able to collaborate on a Prezi. I'm going to click log in and students will need a login for Prezi assuming that they want to save their work. So let's go into the Prezi we were just working on. Now I'm in the web browser and I'm going to click on this sample and once it pops up, I'm given several options to work with down at the bottom. And the most important one is the one that says share. If I click on share, I can either just copy the link, but I can add people by putting in their email. Once I've put in their email, it's going to ask me what they are supposed to be. Are they able to edit it? Are they able to just view it? And we want that person to be an editor. So we would just click add, which I can't do because that is my own email. But once we've done that, all students will then have access to the one Prezi. So what we'd have is one student 
open up a Prezi started, share it with everybody, and then they can work on it via the iPad at their own time. Prezi's are great because students, as we already mentioned, could create autobiographies, they can work collaboratively on something that demonstrates some sort of learning in the classroom or illustrates a class project. Um, in art or social studies, you could use zoomed in photo frames, focusing on just one aspect at a time. You can do a lot of different things, but the benefit is you can add right from your screenshots in your camera roll, or you can search on the internet for images. Prezi's can also be worked on via a laptop or a computer. Of course, the laptop or a computer does give more features, so students may choose to work on their Prezi at home, but the same purposes can be served by using the Prezi iPad app. As usual, if you have any questions on how to use a Prezi, just contact an iLearn specialist.